All right, what's going on guys? This is Logan with West Desert Shooter. This video should be a very fun one. I'm going to compare the 4350 powders. Now I'm missing one. I don't have Shooter's World 4350, but uh, I do happen to have Hodgdon H4350, which has kind of been the long time gold standard for 6.5 Creedmoor for consistent velocities. Not the highest velocities, but temperature insensitive, and you know, it just shoots great. It gives you low SDs all the things you're looking for in a precision rifle. It's brother, IMR 4350. I just got a fresh pound of this as well. I have no experience shooting IMR 4350, and I have no experience shooting the one next to it, which is accurate 4350. So this should be a really fun comparison in the 6.5 Creedmoor of the 4350 powders. Now I've got one wild card lined up. Now I wanna talk about something else real quick, and that is the charge weights that we're going to shoot. So I've got 40 pieces of brass lined up here. We're gonna do a five shot group with two different charges for each powder. So we're gonna shoot a total of 40 rounds once I show you this next powder. Uh, but the important part is we're gonna be shooting the same grains of powder through all four powders. So we're gonna compare what does 40 grains and 41 grains do of each of these different powders. Now I've looked through multiple types of uh, load data online. And H4350, not everybody agrees that you can push it to 41 grains. I trust that my rifle can handle it. I've shot it higher than that before as well. But uh, these other two, it seems to be that you can go a little bit higher on the charge weights for the max charges that I've seen. And uh, you know, for whatever reason, maybe H4350 is just a little touch faster for or whatever other internal ballistic decision makes that possible. But we're gonna be shooting the same charge of 40 grains and 41 grains. So at the end of this, we're also going to be able to see what difference that one grain jump does for each powder. Now let's talk about our wild card. So these are all extruded powders and uh, they're all supposed to be very similar with the 4350 lineup, right? I decided to go with Ramshot Big Game. I also just picked this powder up, have no experience with it, but this one is a spherical ball powder. So this one's gonna be a little bit different and more likely going to be temperature sensitive or more temperature sensitive. It's not going to be conclusive results as far as temperature sensitivity in this video because I'm just gonna shoot them across all the same temperature on the same day, right? No big deal there. But the reason I went with Big Game is not only is it a spherical powder, so it makes it an interesting comparison. On the burn rate chart, it's very similar to the 4350s. It's right in there. And then also, the reloading data that is shown for Big Game has a very, very similar charge weight range as these 4350s, to where 40 grains and 41 is right up near the top of the available load data on Big Game, which is the same for the 4350s. They're all right up near the top. So these should be stout charges between 40 and 41 grains. Very interested to see how all of these do and compare against each other. So there you go, we're gonna do five shots of 40, five shots of 41 across four types of powder. What projectile are we shooting? As you can see over here, I've got a big box of Barnes match burners and this thing is almost full. It's their 500 count box. I probably have somewhere around 400 of those left. So great choice. It's, a, it's the bullet I have the most bulk of on hand for 6.5 and I've shot these 6.5 bullets with good results before. They may need to be tuned after this test for a little bit of overall length testing. Now, in my notebook here, uh, looks like with the Hornady overall length tool, we're at 2.885, should touch the lands. And I think I was usually getting like 2.888, so I just backed it off that little bit to say that's where the land engagement is. And then our overall length that we are going to load them to is 2.8, which is my magazine restriction in my AR-10, which should give us about an 85 thousandths jump. It's not crazy. It's not too far, but it's not necessarily close. We're gonna see how they shoot in the other uh, rounds that I've shot with this bullet. They do okay. Uh, should be under an inch uh, pretty consistently. We will see how it turns out today. Hopefully we're getting much better than that. Uh, but with time, I should be able to stretch those out closer to the lands or even deeper in if I wanna stay inside the magazine. And we can do a jump test later on down the road. So hopefully this beginning test where it's just fun to compare will also lead us to, hey, you know what, maybe I should stick with this powder and continue on shooting it and doing more low development with it. 
So three things we're going to be ranking these as at the end of the video is we're going to give them you know, a gold star for whatever. And the same powder can win in all three categories. So we're looking for velocity. Which one gives us the most velocity for those charge weights? Consistency. Which one has the lowest standard deviation and the most consistent muzzle velocities? Finally, accuracy. Which one shot the best with our combination here? I should mention that this is Alpha Munitions Large Rifle Primer 6.5 Creedmoor Brass. Very nice stuff. This is two times fired and uh, just full length resized it and got it primed back up with Federal uh, Large Rifle Match Primer. So these guys are ready for some powder. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that off camera. Shouldn't be real exciting. Bunch of extruded powders. We're going to be waiting a while on that RCBS. So you guys are going to go straight to the range and we will see how these end up printing on paper at 100 yards. All right, guys, I'm really excited for this one. We have our Uinta Precision UPR10. This is an AR10 platform with the Uinta Precision's bolt action upper that pins onto a DPMS pattern AR10 lower. This is their own billet matching receiver set and it's also got their new Vitrum trigger in here as well. It's got a 20 round Magpul SR25 mag. We got a MDT ground pod up front. We've got an MK machining magneto speed mount, which means we've got a magneto speed V3 chronograph that does not interfere with our barrel at all. So there should be no point of impact change. There should be no harmonics change. We've just got this thing bolted on and held out there in front of the suppressor. Suppressor is a Huxworks Magnum tie suppressor, and it's got a Coltac uh, suppressor cover on it without the outer layer. So it's just the inner rubberized layer that insulates. And uh, because if I put the outer layer on, that magneto has to sit close enough to the center line of the bore that if I put that on, then it interfered. So it's got clearance right now, but uh, I can't do any more suppressor cover to it. Arkin SH4 Gen 2 6 to 24 power. I've got my truck behind me with a light bar and we're at 100 yards. And I just shot a three round cider group to warm up the gun. This barrel was scrubbed completely clean. So the ciders we shot were actually H4350 because that was a load I had previously. Barnes 140 grain, 2.8 overall length. And uh, the first shot was slow and our second and third velocity were consistent. So it shot a really good group, a three round group for, especially for a completely clean bore. Uh, we had three rounds going to 0.4 inches. So at that mag length, with this bullet at that length, the fact that we're testing other 4350s, I think we're gonna be shooting some good groups tonight and I'm really looking forward to it. So we're going to start things off with IMR 4350. We're gonna shoot 40 and then 41 grains. We're gonna continue that pattern for all of the powders. We're gonna start with IMR. We're gonna follow that with accurate. Then we're gonna call, then we're gonna finalize the 4350s with the H4350. And then at the end, we're gonna shoot Ram Shot Big Game. The reason why I'm doing that at the end is because it's a ball powder, and I assume it's going to make our board dirtier than these extruded's. So we're gonna start with the 4350 test first, and then give Ram Shot the disadvantage at the end. But uh, you know, it's a wild card, so we'll throw it in at the end. All right, man, that was a lot to cover, but solid setup. F3R cantilever one piece scope mount as well. Super nice. Definitely check out F3R machine. Our first shots with IMR 4350, 40 grains. Looking forward to it, guys. Let's shoot some little groups. Nice trigger in here tonight. Everything's feeling good.
felt good. Alright, I waited out the wind. I think we got a similar condition. Alright guys, in the last two range trips I've done with these 4350s, we have brought on a ton of data and I'm still kind of going through it in my mind. So let's talk it out here in the video. Uh, first off, I shot these on a Friday night and a Saturday night, right after each other. So I had shot them all and then I discovered an issue with my rifle. The Arca rail that goes on the bottom of my free-floating forend uh, was actually contacting my proof research barrel. So I grinded down the hardware because it was too long for the M-lock and gave it more clearance. I don't think it's contacting anymore. So you know, the essence is, you know, it probably wasn't free-floated the first night. So okay, let's free-float it and then go reshoot, reshoot this test. And I'm glad I did because the range trips brought on different results across both nights, but it also gave me the opportunity to test something that I've been worried about with this barrel, and that is as it heats up, it shoots worse. So on the first night, I actually took two rifles out and did low development on two different rifles. Uh, the first one was my 6 ARC. The second one was the 6.5 Creedmoor with the 4350 test. On the second night, I only had the 4350 test, and I went out at the same time, and I took more time between every five shots to let the rifle cool, give it 10 to 15 to 20 minutes between every five shots. So I really made sure to keep this thing cool at night. Also, the second night, there was a breeze that would pick up and go away, so there's more airflow across the entire rifle. Overall, it should have been cooler. Also, the temperature outside was just cooler. So, uh, Everything worked towards finding out if it is fouling that makes the rifle shoot worse or if it's heat that makes the rifle shoot worse. So let's talk about group sizes real quick in relation to heat and fouling because on the first night we saw an almost perfect trend of shooting a small, the smallest group up to the largest group. It's almost just a graph straight bigger and bigger and bigger and so after that first night, I was curious if I just happened to choose the most accurate powder first and then shot to the worst, which would be very surprising and would be a, a real long shot. So the second night, I switched up the firing orders on these and it also gave opportunity for powders that may have not shot great the first night, like, uh, you know, Accurate or H4350 that were shot at the end and then flip that around to where accurate was the first powder I shot on the second night. So first night I shot IMR 4350, got fantastic results with both SDs and group size. Then we shot H4350 and then we shot accurate 4350. On night number two, I flipped that completely around. I went for accurate first, then H and then IMR. So I wanted to see if IMR would still come out on top looking fantastic if it was shot later on in the night. Big game because it's the wild card. I left that for the last loads on both nights. And on night two, it was getting really late by the time I got to big game. So I decided to go ahead and shoot those fairly quickly compared to the other ones. Uh, I didn't give the rifle as much time to cool between those two strings on big game. So it's an, at a disadvantage, but this is a wild card. It's not part of the 4350 shootout, really. So again, we're not going to talk about specific velocity, just to save you guys some numbers on your heads, but uh, I do want to talk about standard deviations. Night number one with IMR, shot fantastic with good SDs, 7.9 at 40 grains and 5.6 at 41 grains. We followed that up with H4350, which shot pretty well. 10.4 SD, followed by an 8.7 SD. Accurate dropped off a little bit on that first charge of 40 grains, 
with an SD of 23, but then it brought it back with an SD of 8.7 at 41 grains. Big game, not the most consistent speed at 40 grains, it was 20.8, but it did do pretty good at 41 grains. So another thing we're looking at are trends from the 40 to 41. Typically, they shoot worse at 40 and then get better at 41. So on night two, I paid attention to what powders did each trend and H4350 got worse from 40 to 41, which was a little bit strange. And then IMR did get better, but it did not shoot as consistent. So starting off things with our first charges of the night, accurate 4350 being our first group, uh, it fired out a 15.9 SD at 40 and then a 10.6, so pretty respectable. H4350 brought in an awesome first group at 7.9 and then lost it on a second group at 17. IMR, not nearly the same performance we saw on the first night. First group of 17, second group of 12.2. Big game, pretty similar performance as the first night with 40 grains at 22. The second group I shot with big game, uh, not as good as the first night, bringing in an SD of 14. So there's three things we're going to be ranking these powders against each other. I want to do velocity, just overall speed. Who's doing what with the same amount of powders. Then we're going to talk about our consistency. And in my mind, that is standard deviation. So we basically just covered that. Then we're going to talk about group size, accuracy, which one of these 4350s shoots the best. And luckily I shot two groups with both powder charges across two different nights. So we just have more data to go off of now. A few other cool pieces of information we have is velocity gain between the 40 and 41 grains for each powder. So for the first trip, of 4350 we picked up a gain of 61 feet a second for IMR 4350 we picked up a gain of 58 feet a second very similar there so they're very similar powders accurate 4350 we picked up a gain of 64 feet a second so again super consistent across all 4350s ramshot big game is the fastest powder I tested but it's not a 4350 powder so I'm not actually going to give the award to big game but absolutely it is the highest velocity we shot and it also got the biggest it also got the largest gain in velocity for that one grain of powder that we changed another side note for information here is that I had the barrel completely clean before I shot both of these tests so of course I shot a control group three shots before our testing each night and that test load was a Barnes 140 match burner it was set to 2.8 overall length it had 40.2 grains of H4350. It was just some ciders that I had loaded up in some new alpha brass. So it was the same load both nights. But what is interesting is on a clean barrel, you typically get a dip in velocity on that first shot and then your speed comes back. So I tracked that for both nights. And our first shot of each night, uh, day one was 2636, followed by a 2672. So our spread there, is it picked up 36 feet a second. The second night was 26.23, so just a little slower, and then it followed that with a 26.62, so again, just a little slower for a spread of 39. So our first night we had a spread of 36, second night spread of 39. So really consistent change from that clean bore to the second Fowler shot. So again, I did three shots each night before we fired out groups for our testing. So after following that trend line of shooting the smallest to essentially the largest group, not absolutely perfect, but it definitely trended that way in that linear motion, I took my trip two results and looked at the same layout of the fired order of like, did they absolutely shoot smallest to biggest again? Or is it the powder? So I made two different lists where I lined up the firing order that I did for night number two which changes the powders that we used. And then I also lined it up to the same powders and then compared them against each other for group size. Essentially, on the second night, there was no trend like there was on the first night. The first one, we were more likely having a warmer barrel between shots, so maybe that played into effect. And that is what we were seeing, is that the barrel 
it typically doesn't like to shoot hot. It will get worse as you shoot it and the hotter it gets because the second night we kept it cool, but between the two, the fouling should end up very, very similar, right? So I don't think it's fouling that's our issue because on the second night when I kept the rifle cool, we shot good groups into the testing. Whether we were up to round 30 or 35, we still pulled off some good groups. Whereas the first night, it just got worse as we went. So I'm gonna write this off as the barrel doesn't love to be hot. It'll shoot okay and it'll do moderate performance. But overall, towards the end of the night, we were getting closer to one inch groups. Whereas the second night when I really took my time, we were still able to fire off, you know, a three quarter inch group towards the end of our testing. All right, and finally, I wanna look at the combined data that I have here on this spreadsheet. So let's take a look at our first column, which is average velocity difference. This is the difference in speed we saw between trip one and trip two. So for 4350 at 40 grains, it was six feet a second and then a zero. For accurate, we saw a velocity difference of eight feet a second and 12 from 40 to 41 grains respectively. H4350, we saw a spread of four and nine and big game, we saw a spread of one and eight. So overall, still very close, but ultimately, IMR 4350 was the most consistent from trip to trip, whereas it shot the exact same average for 41 grains, literally to the foot per second, the same average. I thought that was very interesting. Um, another very interesting part is if I went off of just my trip number one data, it would point my finger at IMR 4350 being the powder that I want. On trip two, I would not get that same result where I wouldn't be as led to believe 40, IMR 4350 is the one that I want. But when we look at them combined, this is where it starts to look really good. Uh, this is where the average group size and the average powder SD points to IMR 4350. So let's talk about the powder SDs. So I've taken the average velocity, I've taken this average standard deviations from both trips and then the average from 40 and 41 and combined them all down to one powder average standard deviation, which puts IMR 4350 at 10.6, puts accurate 4350 at 14.7, it puts H4350 at 11.07. So that's pretty dang close to IMR. So H4350 and IMR4350 both get really good standard deviations. And when you average them all out, they're really close. So the most consistent velocity award goes to IMR4350 for both having the best powder average standard deviation and day to day, we got the most consistent velocities as well. So all signs point to IMR right there. Uh, let's look at the most, let's look at our powder average group size. So again, we took our group size from 40 and 41 grains, averaged those together for both trips, and we came out with a powder average group size of IMR 4350 at 0.73 MOA, accurate 43.78, so accurate, holding its own there, doing pretty good. H4350 coming in with an average of 0 0.90, and then Big Game coming in with an average of 1.1. So not so awesome for Big Game, but overall, Accurate is surprisingly, Accurate Powder kind of surprised me with the uh, overall accuracy you get with it. That's kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of funny. But again, most accurate powder going to IMR4350. Now our other accolade, which we wanted to award, is the velocity. Who's doing the most with the amount of powder that it's given? And that award for our 4350 lineup goes to H4350 at its 41 grain charge. And uh, yeah, we're getting up to 2714 or 2723 feet per second. Uh, the first night had a nice consistent velocity, the second night not so much, but that's, you know, that's part of the game. So of the 4350s, that gets the highest velocity. Of all the powders we tested, Big Game is the fastest, and uh, it outran H4350 by about 
35 to 20 feet a second, depending on which night you look at. But its average velocity was 2743 and 2751 with the 41 grain charge. Uh, so if you want to go really fast, big game's your answer. The other side of things, I don't care about speed. I want consistent velocity and accuracy. All signs point to IMR 4350 in my rifle. So in summary, guys, I know that's a lot of data to throw at you, a lot of numbers back and forth. Overall, I feel like we got a pretty good profile on our 4350 options, and truthfully, I don't think any of them are bad. Whether it's accurate 4350, it's going to give us pretty good accuracy overall. H4350 is good consistency for velocity, and IMR 4350 seems to be the best of both. So there you go. As far as variables in the tests, are there errors in this test? Sure. Is there a shooting error? Sure. Are there a few weird things that happened? Yep. From night number one to night number two, where we had that hardware that was interfering with the barrel on night number one, and we corrected to night number two. Overall, I guess we shot a little better on night number two, and more consistently. Night number one, we had the smallest groups that we had shot, so that's interesting but uh, it didn't make quite the difference that I thought it was going to, but I'm definitely glad it's no longer touching the barrel. Um, overall, definitely glad about that. But I think that that pretty well wraps it up. Uh, another thing we can learn from this is where Brian Litz, as well as the Hornady podcast has been talking about uh, statistically significant data versus insignificant, meaning you have to shoot enough to know what is actually going on because if you just go off a five shot group you know you can actually be quite wrong on a lot of it and that gets back to my differences of my range trip one to range trip two individually you get different results but when you combine them it actually brings it back to show you a more representative look at what's really going on and especially where we're shooting 20 rounds for each of these powders they're just split into two different powder charges uh, you really get a good idea of what's going on. So I'm glad that I went and reshot the test. Uh, it was definitely worth, you know, doubling up the components. And overall, I had a great time on the range. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully the data makes sense how I laid it out. Hopefully my interpretation of it made sense to you guys. And uh, definitely drop your comments down below. Like the video if it helped you out. So my name is Logan with West Desert Shooter. Hope you guys enjoyed the content here on reloading and results of the 4350 shootout. Hopefully it helps you guys out with your reloading. Don't overlook IMR 4350 and definitely try all three if you get the opportunity. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you in the next one.